Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she is target en enemy number one, not just for the Democratic Party establishment, but for Republicans. And we see this with Ilhan Omar, other grassroots candidates or people that came into office. So are you ready? Like, how do you think you'd be able to cope with that? Because I'm just thinking psychologically how difficult this must be to be the number one target when you're one of the only people in Congress representing the people. Like, can you just respond to the response that AOC got after she won and how you think you would be able to cope with that if, you know, it remained the same, which I'm assuming it would. How about you, Corey? Because you're running again right now. Yeah. Um, so I guess my the last five years of my life has been nothing but um, the first three years anyway was just a lot of scrutiny, a lot of um, uh, um, people saying some really terrible things about me, not knowing who I who I am. You know, and then I became a black identity extremist and then all of those things. So I think for every for every bullet that's been shot into my car, for every um, everything that I've gone through, every time I was ran off of a road, I think that I pretty much I think I'm ready to be able to if I can handle that, if I can stand <laughs> up in front of tanks, if I could be, you know, if I can be assaulted yeah. by the police, I can handle that. Like, I think I, I, I think I'm ready for that. And I, and I know that. Um, but I when I see Alex. Every time, and she can, she'll say this, every time I see her, I say, how are you doing? How are you handling this? How are you sleeping at night? You know, because no matter what you say, people are there recording and putting out articles, you know, even when you don't want to, do you even get to go to the bathroom? Um, but um, I think that that comes with it. That's part of it. So I think, um, I think that in the same way, we grew to be to this point because we're different people than we were when we first decided to run. You know, we've our skin has thickened and so many other things. And so in the same way, I think that we'll all be ready. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Amy? I agree. I think that we've all been brought, it, brought to this level by the amount of persecution that we face, even just with announcing. And I have to say that, um, you know, Alex is a human being. I mean, she is dealing with an immense amount of pressure. And, um, you know, all of us, we offer words of encouragement when we see each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think all of us know that what we're up against is the fight of our lives yeah. for yeah. this country. Yeah. And in, even even the ones that didn't make it, we're still feeling repercussions from us standing up publicly for us having a voice in our communities and our abilities to have jobs and our uh, people, you know, the way that they treat us. We're, all, every one of us across the board has had to pay prices. Many of us can't get jobs in our career fields anymore. Many of us because of running for office and being that outspoken, but that's, that's what it takes to go and have a movement. That's what it takes to stand up against a machine and against power. We have to be willing to sacrifice and say, come what may, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. How about you, Paula? Well, I've, I was already facing a lot of scrutiny before I run for office. I mean, especially during um, the Massey era here. We, it was, it, if, you be, if you were begging for water and you were fighting against industry, you were, you know, you were labeled as a tree hugger and people threatened your life. And so, you know, I, I've, I've been through a lot of that already. Um, it, was, it, it, it was amplified probably 10 times after running for office. You know, there was a lot more scrutiny. I had my life threatened. I had people follow me. Um, but the struggle, the struggle here at home is no greater than any struggle that we can face, mm -hmm. you know, like Ferguson, like, you know, losing their children because we, you know, and people dying because they don't have health care or people dying of drug addiction in this state and, and dying of cancer. You know, people think that they think it's extreme, but I've said it, well, you know what they've asked me, why aren't you afraid for your life? Because if things don't change, I'm going to die anyway. Wow. You know, people die here of alarming rate and that's real. Yeah. That's yeah. real. So, you know, I think that, you know, you just develop, you just develop this, this thick skin because, you know, my biggest fear is if I, my kids will get, you know, I worry if my kids will get cancer every day mm -hmm. and, um, I would a whole lot rather fight than lay down and take it. And so, you know, when, and if I run for office again, it's, 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 it's no bigger than the battle we have at home. 
Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.